Tonight, the armed robbers who brought terror to the streets of Bolton. There, that point, I thought. I thought that was it. Game over. Now, with a string of clues and a huge reward, make it game over for them. Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Live. Dozens of detectives from police forces around the country are here tonight waiting to take your calls. A quick look at the letter bombs, all seven of them so far. Um, I spoke to Deputy Assistant Commissioner Anton Setchell this evening. He's got a huge amount of information to work through, so they don't need another appeal right now. And actually, they're making quite good progress with the inquiry, but if they haven't cracked it, well, we'll return to it next month. Now, last month, we helped in nailing this man, Dingani Malochwa. He left his girlfriend blind in one eye before going on the run. One phone call to the programme, He's now behind bars. We'll show you how this vicious bully faced up to his crimes and to our cameras. And we'll be hunting this lot, some of Britain's most wanted. It's one of these, your neighbour, your customer, your workmate. We've got their names. You tell us where they are. The number's on the screen. Talking of names, Terry, Katie, Danielle and Andrew. They deserve some answers tonight. They lost their mum just before Christmas. That was heartbreaking. But now, within eight weeks, they've lost their dad too. And that was murder. Andrew Batterton was known as Fatter to his family and his friends. He was stabbed to death four weeks ago and no one seems to know why. Someone's being stabbed. Yeah. Is he breathing? Yeah, are you open, are you? About there. Yeah, all right. Come on there, get it sorted. Come on. All right, girls. All right. <laughs> We're going out tonight, Dad. Going for a drink? No, I'm not. What more? No. Oh, I thought you're not going to a pub with me. We used to go like work together, drink together, go shopping together. Like I was the daddy's girl. Everybody knew him as Fatter, but um, I told him I'm not calling you Fatter because, you know, you're my fella, that's your nickname. You are right. You know I am. Um, we just sat in his room, got there, and, he, you know, he said, come and sit in here, because his flatmate was asleep on the set in the living room. And we just sat listening to music, and I was sat on him, and I took one photo, and I said to him, I said, smile, because he wouldn't smile on the photos. Let's have a look. Oh, no. And I said to him, oh, I said, that looks seductive, you know. And cos I'd said that, then he smiled, so I clicked it again straight after and got one of him smiling. Oh, I'm freezing. Freezing red hot, isn't it? In fact, I'm going the window. Oh. I left about 8 o'clock and um, went, walked outside. Have you killed him out here? Yeah. And I give him a kiss and... And he said to me, he said, I love you. And I said, oh, I love you. I'm just glad I told him because, I mean, I didn't know it was going to be the last time. And I'm just glad that me knows. I was dreaming at first, you know. I heard w Warren run ring an ambulance and I've been stabbed. Warren! Then I seen the, the knife wound in his back and I would just had to ring the ambulance. Watch her! 
And he asked him, I said, who's done it, Pat? What, who's done this? And he just shook his head. All right, is there any serious bleeding? Yeah. And when I looked at his back, it was just red. And you knew, you know what red, kind of red it was. Then all of a sudden, he just rolled over onto his back. And that's when I seen the chest. You conscious? Yeah, it's only just. Is he breathing? Yeah, only you all breathe. And that's when I, I knew I was losing him. So I just slapped him and I grabbed his hand and said, Father, stay with me, the ambulance will be here any minute. I heard the ambulance man say it's not looking good to the police as they were leading me away. What he must have gone through, what he must have thought, and how frightened he must have been. All I want is the person to come forward, and then I can have answers. Why? You miss everything, you just want him back. It's be a bit like what's just going to hold. Mrs. Mrs. Laugh and everything, calling me old queen. I used to go mad over that. Mr. Oh, come on, old queen. <laughs> That's what he did. That's what he called me, old queen. Mam or old queen. That's what I miss. Sad losing two parents and hate me. So much heartache, and for what? We really don't know. But I mean, you're, you're fair. You have to keep an open mind. But you're fairly certain this wasn't a burglary gone wrong. We're trying very hard to establish a motive, but we are reasonably happy it wasn't a burglary gone wrong. Now, one of the reasons is you've got CCTV. Two lots of CCTV. Tell us what's happening in this. That's right. We uh, have a figure that goes to the rear of the victim's flat, and leaves some seven minutes later. And you've also got CCTV of somebody who went to the same flat on New Year's Eve and broke the window. That's, right, that's right, yes, well. So somebody's yeah. got a, a real grudge. Why don't you want us to show that CCTV tonight? Well, we do want to disclose that. Uh, we think it's very important. We do want to disclose that. Okay, but you've time. got that CCTV. You've got, a, I think it's a 93% success rate in Cheshire on, on Armour side. You're going to get this guy at some stage. What, how can people help tonight? Well, people can give us information, anyone who's got any information whatsoever. Now, somebody, he, he must have had a spat with somebody. Presumably, somebody, a friend of Andrew, must, must know who he had an argument with. Mm. And was he having an affair? Do you know? He certainly had a steady yes. girlfriend at the time, but he'd had girlfriends earlier than That's that. right. He's had a number of relationships in the past. And did any of those cause anybody upset that you know of? Not that we know of. If anyone knows anything, please come forward and tell us. Well, that is absolutely critical, of course, isn't it? If, if somebody knows that it's possibly their boyfriend absolutely critical there's uh, if they don't come forward of course in a way they're sort of party to a conspiracy if, if they've got a really strong suspicion if they start covering this up I mean you could charge them that's right they could be perverting the course of justice on the other hand if they come forward you're so determined to solve this is a very big reward yes that's right there's a 30,000 pound reward well look if there's anything you could do to help 
please uh, give us a call. Uh, you know the number. Uh, it's confidential, too. There's a £30,000 reward. It's 0500 600 600 to call us here. Uh, details are on our website on bbc.co.uk forward slash crime. Or you can call Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Now, how good are you at recognising faces? Because here's Rav Wilding, who's got quite a few. Yeah, I've got some ugly mugs wanted for some pretty ugly crimes. They're all numbered, so if you recognise them, just give us a shout. First up here is Bakhtar Pervais. He's been charged with money laundering after a deception in Yemen, but we now think he's hiding here in Britain. Pervais has a distinctive injury to his right hand. The top of his three fingers are missing, and he sometimes changes his last name to Pervais and has connections in Huddersfield and Rotherham. Number two here is Mark Ross, who's wanted for making indecent images of children. He was arrested last June but skipped bail and hasn't been seen since. He's got a tattoo of a tiger on his right arm and I think he's got links in the West Midlands and South Yorkshire. Three here is Herland Bilali, wanted in connection with shooting four months ago in Park Royal London. He's Albanian and has contacts in London and Manchester. He also calls himself Lani or Landy. There's a £20,000 reward on his head. And number four could be sheltering him. She's Tatiana Utinska, and she's thought to have helped Bilali avoid arrest. She's 25 and was probably his girlfriend. Or has he dumped her? So if you know where they are, Bilali, Tatiana, or any of the others, give us a bell, 0500 600 600. Of course, you can text us on 83199. Just type CW and then your message. Machetes, sawn off shotguns, multiple getaway cars. You'd think I was describing a Hollywood movie. I'm not. They're just some of the tools used by a gang of bank robbers who won't let anything or anyone get in their way. What we're dealing with is a violent bank job. There's 50 grand in that case. That's reward money for anyone who can help us put these people behind bars. We're talking about Barclays Bank in Horwich at the end of November. Right, Sue, I've got the cat on. Ready to open up? Yeah, go ahead. thrown around the banking hall like a rag doll. I really did think I was going to die. So is Yashu out? I don't know who you're talking about. Has he or not? He might have. Are you going? Who says I'm interested? Wait till I tell the sergeant. Robbery in progress at Barkers Bank, Winter Lane. Any units available? What's round here, that is? 3261 and Panther show us en route. We're round the corner. Nine times out of ten, we've either just missed them or we're not in the right place at the, at the right time, but on this occasion, we were. 3261 kilo, we've seen the males now, they're going registration, Mike, Alpha, 5, 6, Oscar, Papa, Lima. Whoa, 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 whoa. Confirming we've just had a firearm pointed at us. Right, 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 the vehicle is now pulling away, repeating, the vehicle is now pulling away. Come on, man. The vehicle has gone left, left, left onto Crown Lane. That's left onto Crown Lane. Where are you? Where are you? 3261, I've lost sight of the vehicle at this time. Damn! Where are you? 3261, I've lost the vehicle, I've lost the vehicle. There, was that it then? Next left. I know where it'll be. The switch cars, the switch cars, we'll let them off. Towards Charlie New Road, behind the vehicle now. Right, right, right. I'm on Main Road. He's getting out of the car. He's coming at us. At this point, 
like the engine uh, on the van just cut out and I couldn't start it. Uh, I tried to get it in reverse while I was pulling the ignition back, but no matter what did, the, the engine wasn't starting. Stop the back! Engine come Stop on! The back now. Come on! That's when I've seen a second offender pointing a shotgun straight at, uh, at me again. And at that point, I thought, I thought that was it, game over. As I got out of the van the first couple of minutes, I was in shock and I, I thought I was dead and it was just adrenaline keeping me going. The gang got away with a lot of money. I really want to carry on with my life and put all this behind me and I don't feel that I can do that until they're caught. I'll, ne I'll never forget it, I'll never put it to rest, but it'll make me feel ten times better knowing that they're, they're in prison, they're not reaping the rewards of, of stealing the money and trying to kill me in the, in the meantime, yeah. They ditched that Mondale in the car park near the Crawford Arms. to speak to anyone that saw them get into a third getaway car before they actually kill someone i need their names we certainly do and i don't know about you but i thought those officers were incredibly brave to carry on following that car even though that shotgun had been pointed them and they're very very lucky to be alive aren't they yes. I mean, this is a shotgun like the one that was pointed at them. And then there was a, a kind of machete as well. Yeah, it's actually called a bill hook, and this is used by the Forestry Commission. It's very old, it's about 20 years old, and it's actually got the name Bulldog on it. We'd be interested to know how the gang got hold of this. We don't need information about it, but it's no, how they got hold of it. No, just how the gang it. got hold of it. And the person who was using it was left-handed. Yeah, he was, and in a previous robbery that we believe may be connected with it, a machete was held in that robbery. It was used to hack the arm of one of the bank employees, and a, a tendons were severed during that attack as well. How terrifying. And there's a big height difference between the two of them, isn't there? Yeah, the, uh, the shorter man's about 5 feet 6 and the gunman's about 5 feet 11. So it's a bit little, little and large, isn't it? Yeah, but I do want to stress the left-handed business with, the, with this bill hook. I mean, the little guy was almost comical because, well, comical if it hadn't been so serious, because yeah. he was struggling to get over the gate and the bank wasn't, and he sort of fell over it yeah, in the end. Yeah, he fell, almost fell over. And they were wearing distinctive, or certainly the, the gunman was wearing distinctive clothing. The gunman was wearing a black Armani jeans tracksuit, which actually had the white logo down the, uh, the leg of that. And the other guy was wearing a, a grey hoodie with blue and white striped uh, Adidas bottoms. So the key thing is, I mean, you've got, you've got this billhook machete type thing. Where are the guns and where's the money? Because a lot of it was taken, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we think the, the stash is still out there somewhere. We want to know where that is now, where the guns are right now, and who did this, because people in that area, we believe it's a local team, Bolton, Wigan, Lee, people out there know who did this, and we want to call. Now, there's a £50,000 reward, which is yes. a massive reward. People and I might want to be give that money out tonight. Well, they might be tempted to call in, but they might be terrified as well. Who could blame them after what they've seen? Yeah, every day when people give us information now, we protect their identities. We'll meet them in secret. There, no one need ever know that they've spoken to the police. And that's our commitment to them. Well, if you can help, call Dave and his team here, 0500 600 600. Or you can ring Crime Stoppers anonymously if you want to on 0800 555 one. In one of the most shocking cases of domestic violence, last month we were on the hunt for this man, Dingani Malochwa. He did this. So where is he? person that you've been sleeping with. Don't give me that again. There's been a man in this house. There hasn't There's been, been anybody inside the house. There's been a man in house. this house. I don't know why you think you can lie to me. You think I'm bloody I've stupid. I've never, ever given you a reason to doubt so me. So why are you trying to humiliate me? He was really jealous and he, he didn't trust me. I don't know why he didn't trust me, but 
he had something just at the back of his head that I was doing something behind him, which was not true. Where do you think you're going? He has beat me before, so I knew he was going to do the same. Police! Hello? Hello, can you hear me? You bitch. Hello? I covered my face and he continued to punch me and to kick me. And I just begged him to stop hitting me. <laughs> you think you can play with me? <laughs> Quiet! <laughs> Shut your mouth! <laughs> Shut your mouth! You know, Malochwa's ex-girlfriend lost the sight in her left eye. But thanks to you, this violent man has now lost his freedom. He was happily working away in South End until a single call to Crime Watch last month led police and us to his door. And this time, he was the one trapped. Danny. Hello. Hello. My name is Liz Hopkins. I'm from Bolton Police. Well, All right. Okay. Yeah. To tell you that you're under arrest for assault. Yeah. You do not have to say anything. Okay, but well. it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later align in court. And anything you do say may be given in evidence. Watch your head going, Em. Can you tell your pockets yeah. on the table? Yeah. Take your hat off for a minute. Everything we take from you, yeah, you'll get back later. Yeah. 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 Can you slip your shoes off and leave them outside the door, please? That's a very good result. I'm really pleased that he's locked up. It's been a long time coming. So I'm grateful to Crime Watch, I'm grateful to the viewers, and uh, it's going to be dealt with properly now. You know, watching that made me think, big bully, when it's just him and a woman, when he's surrounded by burly police officers, quiet as a lamb. Well, that's excellent news anyway. And Malochwa pleaded guilty to GBH. They'll be sentenced next month. Coming up, the mystery that's gripped South Wales. Who killed Beverly Parkhouse? Time to get up. Camera control. How is my daughter? So is she conscious? No. Uh, is she breathing? I don't know. Like, please, Eddie. And with murder on his mind, Rav retraces one man's final footsteps to find out who wanted him dead. Three shots. One missed and hit the wall here. The other two didn't. One hit him in his chest, the other in his back. The gunman couldn't have been more than three yards away. Between April and July last year, there was a spate of sex attacks in Watford. What is so bizarre is that the man police are looking for wanders around with no trousers. But this guy is no joke. I went out on a 40th birthday and I left a nightclub in Watford. I tried to get a cab home but I couldn't and as I wasn't far from home I decided to walk and as I was approaching the bridge there was a man standing in um, like next to a post of an estate agent. The man we're looking for is Asian or Arab in appearance, in his early 20s, approximately 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 10 inches tall. The most unusual thing about him was the way he was dressed. He was wearing grey boxer shorts but no trousers a light-coloured T-shirt, socks but no shoes, and a woolen bobble hat. We do have some CCTV, and what you can see is him passing by the shop window, walking up to the road. He will have seen our victim walking up St Albans Road towards him. He then goes back the way he's come and goes to the shop next door, where he lays in wait for our victim. As I went past, he was actually playing with himself, and I did shout out, he was a weirdo. And as you follow her shot through, you see up in the top corner where he jumps out on her and the actual first incident happens. From there, I managed to get away and I went round the corner and then he jumped out from behind a van and pushed me up against the house. And he was trying to... <laughs> and he proceeded to push me down to the ground. I managed to get up and started kicking him. 
and somebody come out because I was screaming for help and he called the police for me and then they brought me home. I think it's disgusting and I think he needs to be caught. Well, he certainly does and that was just one of a number of attacks that took place in Watford. The Clarendon Road seems to be a sort of hot spot for him and it was between April and July last year. Why did he stop? Where is he now? Did you see him? I mean, let's face it, he's going to have stood out with no trousers and no shoes. Um, last summer, incidentally, a man fitting his description was spotted in the area wearing a scarf around his face, even though it was boiling hot at the time. I mean, come on, there's the fit. Somebody's got to know who this guy is. We've got his DNA. If you suspect anybody, if you think you know who he is, we need to catch him before he strikes again. Please, the numbers 0500 600 600. And if you've been the victim of a crime, victim support lines on 0845 30 30 900. Peter Oddlewally was a larger-than-life character in the garage music scene. Popular guy who people turned to for help. So why would someone shoot him in the back? Rav went back to the estate where Peter spent his last hours in search of the answer. You can't actually believe it that something like this could happen. Peter was definitely no gangster. Peter wouldn't even hurt a fly. I didn't just lose a father. I lost a friend, it's like a guardian angel, someone that showed me right from wrong, like, you know, the right path, the wrong path. Peter Odewally, or Peter La Cosa Nostra, as he was known, was murdered last April in a Hackney housing estate. Nobody seems to know what he was doing there or why he was killed. But people do know what happened to Peter. They just won't say. And it's not as though people didn't know who he was. Peter was a promoter, um, one of the biggest promoters in the UK garage scene. Um, he put on, over the course of the last few years, he's put on some of the biggest events in the country. You know, Peter was not into the guns. He wanted the guns well away from his raves. He didn't deal with drugs. He didn't deal with them sort of guys at all. Mum, I'm just going up east on business, yeah? See you later. If Peter wasn't a man who went looking for trouble, how did he end up in it so deep that night? I saw him go to a saloon car. He didn't go in his own car. There was a man and he opened the door for him. Somehow I had a, a, not a very good feeling about it. It was the last time Peter's mum saw him alive. One hour later, he's in Fellows Court, Hackney. He spent some of the next three hours in this building. But where? Shortly before midnight, Peter came down these stairs. We don't know exactly what happened on the stairs but we do know what happened at the bottom. Three shots. One missed and hit the wall here. The other two didn't. One hit him in his chest, the other in his back. The gunman couldn't have been more than three yards away. So was he one of the people Peter went to see that night? Who drove off in a green BMW while Peter lay dying? I need some help. I don't even know what Peter was doing up there. I don't know if he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hello, mate. Can you hear me? We were told that Peter called out, Mummy, help me. Mummy, help me. I understand if people don't want to call him because they think they're going to be a grass. But you've got to look at it like this, yeah? If that was your dad, yeah? Or your mum? Or your brother, yeah? Would you want me to call in if I knew? As a parent, you expect to go before your children. Justice has to be done. Well, I'm joined now by uh, Peter's brother Chris and DCI Scott Wilson in charge of the investigation. Chris, how has this affected you? Um, well, I think for anybody who's been through anything like this, it's, um, it's just, just a, such a shock. Um, you know, I, I feel sick, really. The whole thing just made me angry. Um, 
you know, my mum's lost a son, I've lost a brother. It's just awful, really. I mean, have you any idea what Peter may have possibly got mixed up in? Um, no idea. I mean, you know, he was a guy that was out and about. He was a club promoter. Um, I guess he moved in some dodgy circles. Um, but that was part of, part of, comes with the territory. Um, but all I know is whatever, whatever it was he was doing out there that night, you know, he, he's an unarmed man. He didn't deserve to get shot in the back in cold blood. You know, no, nobody deserves that, you know. DCI Scott Wilson, you're charging the investigation. What is it you really need to know? Firstly, I'd, I'd want to identify the people in the saloon car that picked Peter up that night. That was an unusual event. Peter always travelled in his own car. Secondly, that night he sent a message to Rico saying he wasn't going to, to see Rico. So again, we want to know where was he going. He obviously had something planned. So you mentioned a car. There's obviously another car involved, a uh, BMW X5. What do you need to know about that? Yeah, again, that is vital. That car was seen to drive away after Peter's, Peter's death. Uh, and again, the person there, we need to know who they are. They might have seen the murderers run away, or he might have been there to collect Peter. Okay. Now, obviously, there is a possibility that Peter was involved in something dodgy. If people involved with him are watching this and too scared to come forward about getting in trouble themselves, what can you say to those? Well, I'm only here to concentrate on the murder of Peter. That's what I want to do, to find out the person who killed Peter. Uh, I say Trident's been in existence now for eight years. We're Trident testing, protecting witnesses, and I would urge people to come forward and put their trust in us. You mentioned Trident, the Met Unit tackling gun crime in the black community. You've been extremely busy this week. Two very high-profile cases, uh, a murder in Streatham in South London and another in Peckham. How are those cases going? Yeah, the, the case in Streatham, eh, there was 300 people at the ice rink there on Saturday evening. Again, with only 100 people have came forward, so there's still 200 people who could be witnesses, and I would urge those people to come forward. OK, well, let's make it happen. If you can help with that or Peter's murder, call us here in the studio, 0500 600 600, or anonymously phone Crime Stoppers, 0800 555 And a lot of calls already coming in. We've got some really interesting ones in the Bolton armed robbery. We've got four names that the police are already interested in. One guy's been named twice. And we've got some great results from other programmes to tell you about now. Uh, three years ago, we reconstructed Felicity Paget's murder. She'd been stabbed to death in her home in Portsmouth. Her fiancé, Billy Webb, told us how they were both attacked in the middle of the night by a knife-wielding maniac. Well, turns out there was no maniac. He used a kitchen knife himself to kill Felicity after they'd had a row. Forensic proved his story of the midnight attacker was, well, just a lie. He's now been found guilty of murder and been sentenced to life. In November, we asked for your help to find the paedophile Gerald Jackson. He was wanted for a series of sex offences against children. One call to Crime Watch, and Jackson was tracked down to Jamaica, where he was on holiday. Police picked him up at Gatwick Airport on his return to the UK, and he was arrested, and he's been jailed for ten years. This guy was one of last month's wanted faces. He'd conned his way into players' changing rooms at Fulham Football Club, you remember? He'd nicked, I think, £20,000 worth or so of personal items from some of the stars. Several people called on the night, naming him. 24-year-old David Seville from Stevenage was arrested. He's pleaded guilty and is now awaiting sentence. Gary Salmon was wanted for the murder of Marvin Bradshaw in Nottingham in 2003. One man was convicted, but Salmon disappeared. Police caught up with him in Birmingham. He's now been sentenced to life. So can we catch this man? He's wanted for attempted murder after repeatedly stabbing a passerby last summer in a street in central London. Was it a homophobic attack? Well, his victim certainly thinks so. I've been out with a couple of friends who've been to a bar. Had a few casual drinks. And I decided I was going to walk through the river here. Some guy w walked past me and said something with quite a thick Scottish accent. I noticed he was following me across the road, talking as he was following me. And uh, he sat down on the wall. But I um, just sat down next to him to try and grasp what he was saying. He'd come to London. He had, he had nowhere to stay. His parents had both died at the same time, and I was thought maybe that's what he wanted to talk about. And then he started to get a bit suggestful. And he said he could have anything I wanted for 30 pounds. Within a flash, he, he jumped on top of me, got a knife out which looked like a red Swiss Army knife. And he's like, oh, give me your money, I won't kill you. I won't kill you, you puff. He, 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 he said I was going to cut your face open. He, he then kept putting the knife to my eye. I'm going to rip your eyeball out. He pierced the upper eyelid. I kept thinking to myself, if I don't hold him back, you know, he's going to blind me or something like that. 
but I managed to push him off. I could feel there was like quite a lot of blood coming off my face. I felt very short of breath because I'd been stabbed in the back. Um, jumped over the wall. I said to the people, there were three people sitting just on the other side. I actually said to them, um, thanks for helping me. This guy's just tried to kill me and all you can do is just stand there and watch. I know from the CCTV that there's three people sat here, two girls and one boy. They must have seen what happened. I've got the attacker talking to the two girls. I need to know what he was saying to them. Was he threatening them, telling them not to come to the police? I need them to come forward because they've got a great look at his face. I get flashbacks of him putting the knife to my face. They had the knife to my eye. It was quite persistent. He was going to rip my eyeball out. Um, I mean, it was quite hard, actually, holding him back. He was quite strong. I was shouting for help constantly. Uh, I got no help at all. Well, the police are treating this as attempted murder. Not surprising. The victim was stabbed repeatedly with a knife, like this one, and his lung was punctured. The attacker had a Scottish accent and he used homophobic language. You know what he looks like. The EFIT is a good one. And he told the victim that both his parents were dead. He'd been chucked out of his council house in Scotland. He was now homeless in London. And it all happened in August. What about those three people who clearly saw what happened? Was that you? If it was, or if you know anything, call now, 0500 600 600. Now Rav has a bunch of villains also caught in the act on CCTV. Well, we had some amazing results last month. In fact, half of all those we wanted you to identify have actually been arrested since our programme. But tonight I've got my sights set on robbers of all descriptions. Some devious, others downright dangerous. So take a good look. The first lot are a right bunch of jokers. Have they been watching too many cops and robbers films? Well, this is not so much heist, more like clueless. Nice tights, mate. Here are some of them earlier in the day. They're at a co-op in Widnes and think they're clever, breaking off the alarm sensors and having a good look around. Actually, it means we get a good look at them. Two in the morning and they're back. How many burglars does it take to nick a packet of fags? Four in this case. Next, it's off to the back room to crack the safe. And what's in the bag? Uh, it's an angle grinder. We could be here for a while. And we are. Watch those sparks, mate. Two hours of messing about, and they get precisely nowhere. Never mind, lads. Smile for the cameras. These three also think time's on their side. They're in a jeweler's in Exeter, and the man in the stripy tops eyeing up the window display. While his two mates distract the shopkeepers, he hovers by the door trying to get into the cabinet. Ten long minutes later, he's in, and they're off. They grab £8,400 worth of rings, but they don't spot the camera. Dark hair, stripy top. Bald head, blue coat. Stocky build and the word Tokyo on his jacket. Who are they? The gang in this red BMW are after cash and they're ready to attack anyone who gets in their way. They're at a laundry firm in Alton, Hampshire. They can't break down the door, so try the window. Inside, an employee is asleep. As soon as they see him, one grabs a baseball bat. They beat him back and pile in. They make off with nearly two grand and leave the employee with two broken arms. The BMW was found burnt out nearby in Odium later that day. Who sold it to them? M728VWW is a reg plate. If you know it or them, call us. Two cowards targeting the elderly. Can you get much lower than that? They've blagged their way into a house in Bermondsey, South London. But their 90-year-old victim is suspicious. He asked them to leave, but they're not going anywhere empty-handed. They corner him. One roughs him up, while the other nicks his wallet. No shame, no sense of decency. Names, please. This woman's at Annerley Station near Croydon. Close behind, three men looking for an easy target. They stand on the bridge and watch her. She sits reading in the shelter. Two close in, 
then surround her. Now she's trapped and there's no way out. She's distressed and tries to get away, but they're too quick for her. One grabs her bag and drags her across the platform. The other kicks her when she's on the ground. They're a predatory gang prepared to lash out. We need to find them before they do much worse. So if you know who they are, you know to ring 0500 600 600 or you can text us on 83199. Just type CW and then your message. And if you'd like to see any of the CCTV again, you'll find it on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash crime. Our next case is one big mystery, and without your help, South Wales police fear it might never be solved. And that's why they're offering a huge award, £20,000. But someone somewhere must know something about what happened to Beverly Parkhouse. Get up. Shake a leg is a good girl. Bev, come on, lad. Time to get up. Come on, lad. Time to get up. Camera control. Can't wait, my daughter. Is she conscious? No. All right, is she breathing? I don't know. Like, please, I need. When we first arrived at the scene, Beverly was dead in bed. There had been a fire in the bedroom, but there was no sign of any breaking into the house. There was no sign of a struggle in the bedroom, and Beverly was a smoker. So all the indications were this was probably an accidental death. Very loving daughter she was. She was in my house quite a lot. She did, uh, after my wife died. I've known Bev since we were, since we were 17 years old. That's when we first met. Uh, I was attracted to her. She was so pretty. She had long black hair. She was funny. Oh, we had some good times. Really good times. And then we was married for 27 years. Time for a fire, Glenn? Thanks, Dad. All right. All right. Okay. Mm. What's on up the club tonight, Dad? They got a girl singing. Huh? Nice voice, you see. Your mum had a good voice. Yeah. You're going to be all right tonight by yourself, Dad? Yeah, I'll be all right, don't worry. There's plenty on the box in there. You sure? Yeah, don't worry about it. You go and enjoy yourself, kid. OK. Better go then, eh? Nothing, you know the rules. Whoever comes in late gets to the bar for the extra round and make mine too. Greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Bev, love. Stay for another one, is it? No, listen, I've got to go home. I promise, Dan. Have you booked a taxi? The books of taxi is waiting outside. Oh, right, love. Yeah, phone me tomorrow, love, will you? Okay. Love you to bits. Love you to bits. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Yeah. Ta-da, love. Bye. In the back, love. Surprise, surprise. How are you going, Claire? Oh, it was great, Dad. I had a fantastic time. Mm. Oh, the God. singer was fantastic. Oh. Really brilliant. Yeah. Many up there? Oh, yeah. All the usual crowd. All the same old suspects. You know... I think I've done a little bit too much dancing. I think I'd better go to bed. <laughs> oh, OK. Off you go. Good night, kid. Good night, Dad. The 
phone rang. It was Ken's voice, and he said, "On." He said, "Oh, Ken, all right." He said, "A bit of bad news for you, boy." And I said, "What's that, Ken?" He said, "Beverly's dead." I couldn't believe it. Well, let's just say it may well change your investigation. Beverly Parkhouse's blood showed low levels of carbon monoxide. It means she never inhaled the fumes. She was already dead. She's been murdered, probably suffocated. It was unbelievable. The first thing, you've lost your wife at 46 years old. And then she'd been murdered. It just don't happen to people. It just don't happen. Exactly what happened to Beverly that night remains a mystery, but what we do know is there was no sign of a break-in. So how did the killer get into the house? Did someone open the door with a key? Did Beverly herself open the door and allow the man in that was about to kill her? Beverly was also found naked in bed without any sign of a struggle. The likelihood is she knew her killer. I need to hear from anybody who may have seen somebody hanging around outside the house or entering the house or leaving the house on that night. And also, how did the killer get to the scene? Did you see any suspicious cars in the area? Beverly was probably suffocated, possibly with one of her own pillows. If she did scream, nobody heard her. Not even Ken, who was only a few feet away, was aware his daughter was being murdered. There are two items missing from the house. The first is an orange disposable lighter from the kitchen. Was this used to start the fire? The second is Beverly's mobile phone. We know that she used that phone shortly before her death. The killer thought it important enough to take with him. Where are these two items now? So this guy was looking at her all night. And did you ask her who he was? So she's never admitted to you about any of this? You never guess what, boss? It looks like our Beth was having an affair. No, I never thought she was an affair at all. No, no, sus no suspicion. There's no way. And she wasn't the type of person. Exactly what happened to Beverly that night remains a mystery, and people will naturally jump to conclusions over who is responsible for this murder. I've got a problem. I've got people with a motive and no alibi. I need to keep an open mind. I believe there are people in the community who know more. What we do know is that someone in Ogmore Vale is a killer and is at large. Now, if Bev was having an affair, with whom? Had you heard anything? Had she said anything to you? Did you see her with anyone? It's really important, any suspicions at all, that you divulge them, please. And Bev's phone is still missing. It was a silver Samsung T100. There's some clever technical work being started now, which we hope could soon produce a breakthrough, but we absolutely need to find a phone. And work's being done on the phone, work's being done on forensics as well, but ultimately it's so important that we hear from people in the community who saw Bev's with anybody or heard anything. And in fact, police are so worried that they, about who this killer is, they're offering a huge reward, £20,000. Please, uh, give us a call here in the studio, 0500 600 600. If you prefer to call locally, the incident room is on 01656 306099. Now here's Rav with some people we know about but all of them need to be caught. Right, I have a butcher's at this lot. We've already got some good calls coming in on the first four. Number five here is Ben Chambers, wanted for a serious assault and possession of firearms. He's in hiding after skipping bail. He's 5'10 and has a gold tooth. He also has connections in Plumstead and Greenwich in London and the Greenhive area of Kent. Number six, this guy is a registered sex offender, Darren Slaney, also known as Slaz. This time he's wanted for an offence against a child. Now you'd know him if you saw him, especially his tattoos. He's got swallows on both hands and a lion's head on his right arm. Now he could be violent, so if you see him, don't take risks. Number seven here is Alan Foster. He's wanted for the murder of David Rice. He was shot eight times on a beach in South Shields last May. Foster is known to travel to Mallorca and the Canaries. 
He's also got links in Canning Town in London and Essex. He sometimes uses the alias Sean Wilkinson, but whatever he calls himself, call us. And finally, my number eight is this guy, Dennis O'Brien. He's wanted for drugs trafficking and money laundering after, get this, 166 million pounds worth of cocaine was found in a warehouse in Rotterdam back in 2005. And that was one of the largest seizures ever made by British police. O'Brien is from Liverpool, but we think he could be in Spain. He's also known as Dennis Kelly. So have you seen him or any of them? Give us a ring, 0500 600 600 news on arrest. Now, you remember last May, Special Constable Nisha Patel Nasri, she was stabbed on her doorstep. Since our reconstruction, a second man, 35-year-old Jason Jones, has been charged with murder. Last month, we appealed after a 16-year-old girl was raped in Wood Green in London. Her attacker, you might recall, wore a distinctive two-pack T-shirt like this one. Well, police have now charged a man with rape, kidnap, false imprisonment and aggravated burglary. In November, we showed you shocking CCTV images of the murder of Charlie Butler, gunned down in the street just yards from his front door. Now, two men from Croydon have been charged with murder. Douglas Johnson and David Austin will face trial later this year. Terry O'Neill was wanted in connection with a murder and an attempted murder in London's Canning Town. He was tracked down to the Netherlands, where he's now awaiting extradition back to the UK. And finally, last May, we reconstructed the brutal murder of 22-year-old Lucy Hargreaves. She was shot dead in her home in Walton in Liverpool, and her house was then set on fire. Now, Kirk, Trevor Bradley and Anthony Downs have been charged with murder, but police still want to trace this man in connection with Lucy's murder, Kevin Parr. He's very distinctive, six foot five, cropped ginger hair, a one-inch scar on the back of his head, and he also uses the name Joseph Kenneth Parr. If you know him or you see him, don't approach him call us. There was an attack in Bordsley Green in Birmingham last night and it's almost certainly the guy who attacked a vulnerable young woman just before Christmas. Detective Sergeant Jane Corrigan has been retracing the victim's steps. I came out of the hospital and walked over to the bus stop and then he turned up and then he turned my hand around the back with some rope and to put a knife to my back. I told him I wanted to go home and that I was scared. He said, if you scream, I'll stab you. It would have been about 6 o'clock on the 14th of December. Boards of Green East is the road, major arterial route out of Birmingham city centre. Rush hour traffic, Christmas traffic coming out. So these are potential witnesses that we really need to come forward. Suddenly must have seen something at that time. He's an Asian male, 20 years of age, 5 foot 8, 5 foot 9. He's got a goatee beard, wearing a black bobble hat on the night, black three-quarter leather jacket, black joggers with a white stripe down the side. We've left the bus stop, yeah. and he's walked up this road past the McDonald's. And we've already passed an alleyway, so he had plenty of opportunity to take her somewhere secluded, if that's what he was looking for. He had some purpose in coming past these shops. He knew exactly where he wanted to go to. What has made them blend into the crowd? He's got a knife to her. Her hands are tied with string. She was fearful, petrified, so she's come along and complied with what he wanted. We've walked quite a long way from the shops. That's a good walk down here, yeah, quite a few hundred yards. And this is the part where he brought it to. This is just tucked right in between these houses. I would never have guessed that this was a park. If you had no knowledge of this area, you would just drive past it every day. You wouldn't see it. So this is where he's taken her? This is where he's come through to. I can't imagine how frightened she would have been on that night. It's been so dark. There's no light in here at all, is there? Not at all. This stump here is uh, where the attack took place. One of the things we know that he's also done here um, is he smoked. He smoked. He smoked Richmond cigarettes. That's what our, our uh, attack victim has told us. So after the attack, he, he's come out of the, the bushes? He's come out of the bushes and uh, he's then run off down this alleyway into what's known as Finnemore Road. It stopped me going out on my own. And it stopped me being around men and stuff. I'll start going out more when I know he's been caught.
Somebody in this community must know who this guy is. I mean, we've got so many clues. Somebody's brother, somebody's son, perhaps even a boyfriend. Somebody knows who this man is. And as we were saying, he was out again last night. Um, he's a pretty unpleasant guy. And it was the same area, 40 yards where the first girl was, was attacked, just by Heartland's hospital. This time, you got some pretty good clues about him. There. We did. I mean, we've got a better picture of him now. What we think is he's attracted to a fuller figure female and that he may have a breast fetish. This may be something that a girlfriend might be able to help us with. So any former girlfriends who recognise that guy and no matter breast fetish, he's, and he goes for quite big girls generally, doesn't, doesn't he? That, that's right. We also know that he's got an Asian accent and last night his victim described that he smelt of cannabis. Um, we have his DNA so we'd like to reassure people if we can rule out any innocent people not, not involved in this attack. He's Last night he ended this attack um, only because his phone rang and that rang to the tune of Smack That by Akon. Do you know the guy? Do you know that uh, guy? Can you put it together with that phone? Can you get it, put it together with a breast fetish? Were you a, a girlfriend of his? Interestingly, we were attacked by him because although the first girl had her hands behind her back and he hid that by putting a coat over them, he had this incredible chutzpah just going through the, the, the rush hour with that. Incidentally, we've got his DNA. We do have his DNA and we've also got a pretty good e-fit. So, put it all together, please. If you've got anything at all, give us a call 0500 600 600. Let's see how the calls have been coming in so far. Raf, what can you tell us? Loads, actually. We'll start off with a bolt and arm robbery. If you remember, that was the one where the officers chasing actually got shot at. We've got loads of calls coming in there. Several names put forward. In fact, we're up to 16 and counting all the time. Now, then we showed you the Watford uh, trouserless attack attacker. Remember, we showed you the e-fit of that guy. We've had several names put forward, but we've had two, which are exactly the same, which is fantastic. We've already got addresses and sightings flying in for the wanted faces. Um, we've had the same address twice for one of them, could it be you? And remember Peter Oduwali, remember we showed you the music promoter that was killed, murdered in fact, in Hackney last year. We've, I have to point out there's in fact a £20,000 reward on that one, so that's got to inspire someone to call in there. Phones are still buzzing in, uh, there's loads more stuff to tell you in the update programme, perhaps a little bit later than usual, but stay up and watch it, it's surely worth the wait. Details on tonight's cases are on our website, bbc.co.uk slash crime. On our phone lines are open uh, until midnight tonight and from 7.30 till midnight tomorrow. We're back after question time with, we hope, some answers of our own. In fact, it looks like we'll have a lot. That's Crime Watch Update at 11.30, half an hour later in Wales. Please join us if you can. And Crime Watch itself is back live on Monday the 5th of March. Whatever happens, at least on our account, don't have nightmares, sleep well. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you.